Am I the most persnickety guest you've had? Persnickety. Maybe you have the biggest v vocabulary out oh, of all the guests. Yeah. How does that sound? I went to college. Good. Good. Where'd, you go, where'd you go to college? Mr. Jones, NYU. NYU. And so then smart. Baruch. Was that like theater you went there? Yep. Uh, one of my favorite jokes to say is I have a BFA because I'm a big <laughs> asshole. Oh, nice. So that kind of tells you a lot for about the NYU. me. NYU. Mm -hmm. And you've been in the city since you graduated or did you move back to New Jersey at any particular time? Move back to Jersey for the pandemic. Thank yeah. you. Yes, please fix me. This is boy technology. No, oh, yeah, you're too. good. <laughs> Branded. I love this oh, so yes. much. Uh, you got to you gotta remember where you're at. Of course. Definitely. Of course. But yeah, so after, uh, after NYU, you uh, stayed here? Yes, for a little bit. Um, and it's good. I mean, I kind of go back and forth between the city and Jersey. I much prefer the city, though. Yeah. Well, growing up in New Jersey, I spent, the first, I briefly probably told you, I spent the first six weeks of my life in New Jersey. I'm listening. And I'm just fixing my hair. You don't have to wear it if you don't want to. <laughs> I just got to make sure this sounds good over here. Okay. So I spent the first six weeks of my life in New Jersey. I don't know if I told you that, but I was born, oh, in, really? I was born in Princeton. I was born at the New, New Brunswick Hospital. And we lived in like a little apartment complex over there. My dad worked at TGI Fridays. And then both my yeah. parents got jobs in New York City. So it seems like they really figured it out once they had me. I guess I was a tool of motivation for them. <laughs> and I they like live in the city. And then you don't live with your parents. You have your own separate. Right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is the, you're in the studio, the, the apartment, pad? the bachelor pad. Well, yes, the for now. the podcast studio. For yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. You know, Very like nice. this, this couch has become a little bit holy, I will say. Really? Yes. That's like it's, so beautiful. It's it smells holy. <laughs> yeah, okay, There's good. There's some secrets in okay, here. Okay, good. But the thing is like, Nowadays, if I have a date over, it just seems a little bit awkward if I have them on the podcast. If she's not a couch. comedian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Like the I only... would love to hear your horror stories about what happened on this couch right here. Nothing. And if I I'm allowed it... to sit. No, yeah. Well, little crunchy. if there is anything bad, it would be on like this side of the cushion. So you don't have to worry Thank about you. this is a clean side. Oh, such a great host. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> so, Bonnie, you're um, all over the comedy scene. You got your own show. I see you Couple working all over the place. <laughs> Uh, what was the transition to comedy for you? Were you like a big theater person in high school, middle school, plays? I was, and then I realized my favorite people to play or characters were the funny ones. They were actually the evil ones, you know, like the antagonists. Really? And kind of the, like, I liked it so much because it's like, I like that special different character. You know, there's the goody two shoes and that's good. That's actually me in real life. But it's fun to play evil. I like it. And, you know, because a lot of my comedy now, I do characters. Like, I do voices and accents. And I play my own boyfriends. And that's always fun. Or ex-boyfriends. They're still boyfriends to me. No, I love it. <laughs> I play my ex-girlfriends and same girlfriends to me. I'm wondering exactly where the wig is. I've seen oh, the video. Well, I've got one planned out for the next sketch over there. Oh, that's, that's just nice. the Italian fro. So we can't give too much away about that okay. one. But, but the rest of them, I've got the, the wigs in the closet. Oh, it's Don't beautiful. you worry and about the blow up it. And blow-up dolls, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the blow-up dolls. You know, sometimes, like, I'll feel a little bit weird about playing the girl in my own sketch, especially when it's me. But other times, I just can't wait to play it. You know, yeah, it's like a, you can't it's a find feely one hot thing. enough. You're yeah, like, exactly. I'm hotter. <laughs> yeah, I'm more snatched. Yeah, baby. literally, like I have to wear the belly shirt. I'm like, you know, I love you that figure though. It out. I think yeah, that's yeah. perfect though, because like women worry about being objectified by men, but like. I want the men to just play the women they say they're into, you know, like I want to see the big, you know, yeah. jugs and stuff. That's and like how, like, I guess that's how it was back in like the, yeah, that's how <laughs> it was like back in the, in the earlier times, I guess when women weren't allowed to play characters, men would just play them. But I think it's a lot better now that the women can play yeah. themselves. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's fun. Yeah. I don't really go as far as to dress up. I did do uh, male drag once and that was fun. Weren't you Charlie Chaplin once though? Or it was an outfit that looked like Charlie Chapman. I think um, I saw it on your Instagram. I don't think that... Well, I, I was Weird Al. I was in Charlie Chaplin. That looks I like a Weird Al wig, by the way. I'll pop up the wig right yeah. here that I'm referring to Daniel so you Radcliffe. guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Very fun. I, I used to get that all the time, like when I was 12, 13 years old, wearing Harry Potter glasses. Oh, okay. And it was kind of like... I, I don't know if it was a mean thing that people would say to me, but I embraced it as being like the protagonist. Like, yeah, I'm Harry Potter. I got the wand oh, and shit. Oh, I said I'm the antagonist. Yeah. Oh, Who's right, the right, right. antagonist in Harry? Is that the bald guy? Voldemort? Voldemort. Okay, he's so. bad. 
Yeah. Okay. Did you ever did you do a lot of reading growing up? Like you, the Harry Potter, the Twilight series? I'll save it for when I'm older. I'm not the biggest reader. I can read someone, but I yeah. don't, I'm not the biggest book fan. I love that. You'll <laughs> wait till you're older. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I have more time to read. Yeah, like I've got a lot of books here. I haven't, I've maybe read a few okay, pages flex. of each. Not but, aim yeah. high. Yeah, 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 exactly. This is just more for, you know, the kind of overall uh, aesthetic is of Seinfeld? the apartment. Yeah, I yeah, love it. I love it so much. It's yeah. guy who strategically put books at his fireplace. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's well, great. it's not a working fireplace, you know. Yeah, I would hope not. So but that's, that's how, cool. That's how I, keep I actually, it. I have that same roller thing that you have. Oh, the ab wheel. The ab wheel. So, how, do you mm -hmm. have a more advanced one that this one? Because this Mine's one's more kind purple. of like stingy. Yeah. My mom got that for me for my birthday, and I was so insulted. Wow. <laughs> That's a nice gift, though. A I know, but gift? like... Wait, why? She was implying something when she got you the Yeah, abrio? I was like, ew, exercise? Well, you like exercise. Yeah, you like yeah. tennis and yeah. playing like a girl. moving around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like everything. Wearing the heels. The mental, the physical. Yeah, yeah, the tucking. <laughs> Wait, but why did... Why was this offensive to you, though? Oh, I was like, I don't want, like, a suggestion to work out more. Do you think that's what it was? Or she was like, oh, look, it's Not on at sale. All. My mom saw it, like, on clearance at TJ Maxx. She didn't give a fuck, you know? <laughs> Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, I mean, you just did. Yeah, of course. Okay. We, we won't Let's blurp, get we won't out. bleep it out. What if I run for president? If you, wait, if you want me to bleep out the F word that you just said, I can. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll Lots talk. of other words. I'll give you my notes. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about stamps. that after. But uh, growing up in New Jersey, what was the transition like in terms of like going to house parties as it is now for <laughs> Ubers? You know, like when you used to drive home, I'm sure a lot of your friends, maybe you're not friends with them at all because they were doing bad things, but I'm sure that there was a lot of drunk driving growing up in New Jersey, right? That's just Jersey driving, baby. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, it's also because the signs in Jersey are so difficult. If you miss one turn, they're really hard go, like, to read. Yeah, you know, all like those letters. Five, yeah, another five there's miles. New Jersey. Um, no, but it, I just think that's so funny that you assume I'm like the house party type. That was so not my vibe at all. <laughs> they were dirty, you know, a little like dingy and stuff like that. I don't know. I actually, I really got freaked out at a lot of them too because we were, legal things were happening, you yeah. know? And I think that's so funny. I'm such a buzzkill, no. you know? <laughs> but why did you decide to go to New York? Like, had you been going to New York your whole time growing up? Oh, yeah. That was actually where a lot of my comedy training and sort of like influence came from um, because... I would even take improv classes with my mom growing up. I'm scared to drink an unmarked water glass. I should have marked it water. Yeah, you're right. Not that. It's just an open container of water as well. Yeah, it's, it's water. From a though. boy's I, place. <laughs> I assure you it's water. Yeah. Wait, maybe people be like, or maybe I'll joke around and be like, oh, there's clear meat in there. Is it from your sink? There. Yeah, it's tap water. Okay, tap water. That's The okay. New York tap is the best, you know? It's delicious. It's unreal because I'll go down to a place like Miami and I'll just still stick my head under the bathroom kitchen sink. Mm-hmm. Or, excuse me, not kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and I'll taste the difference. It's crazy. It's beautiful. New York City tab. Okay. Anyway, sorry, I didn't know if you had saying? like a Brit or so. I don't know. Water's a lot more interesting than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure not. But, um, to, oh, New York. And just, yeah. I would take classes, a uh, bunch of different places, like comedy theaters and stuff. And then, honestly, I really wanted to be in New York because of NYU, because of the acting program, and also because of uh, NBC and like SNL and all the comedy, like clubs and things like that. I just really, I was so attracted. It seems really cliche, but bright lights, you know, people from everywhere and just comedy was great. I really loved NYU. I did uh, film, television, writing, and I'm like, oh, I want to be around creative. So this is kind of the perfect place. Hey, I can go to work and then pop over to Ted Jones's yeah, place and absolutely. do a little podcast. Did you meet a lot of people who are... I guess in the comedian field or acting field, being at NYU, I'm sure more so acting, but still comedians as well. I've met a lot more people recently, like post COVID. Uh, but I mean, in college, I'm balancing so many other things, like meeting people, I guess, but also meeting myself. That's that a big. Deep. No, I'm kidding. That I did deep. that recently, not <laughs> any time in college. Um, still a goody two shoes all throughout college. Yeah. How about you? What were you like? Were you like? not drinking college? I'll get to me. I don't like drinking. I, yeah, I, I hate don't the really, taste. I don't, I don't get either. empty calories, oh right? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Drinking. Yeah. You, Oops, you said sorry. It all, I hit this. You said it all Ow. correctly. Yes. Empty calories. I also taste bad. It's yeah. poison. It's poison. I was. I drank a lot crack. in college. Yeah, crack on the other hand. I understand <laughs> that. That's from At the least earth. you get it off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally. But in college, I drank a lot. Uh -huh. And then over like the past like three and a half months, I haven't had a drink. It's not really been intentional. Three and a half. 
but I just, uh, it don't really like the taste. more than any guy I've ever asked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like you ask a guy when's the last time he drank and when's the last time he changed well, his sheets. Well, you can smell it on the breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah both of them. <laughs> might laugh for both of those things. What made you stop drinking? Uh, I think it was just the way that it affected me the days afterwards. Like, Oh, yeah. You know, hung over like, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. If I mm-hmm. had two drinks, I would be feeling it for sure for the next 24 what were those to 48 drinks? hours. Whatever. I would just drink whatever. Oh, whatever? Vodka, soda, okay, I'm picky, too. Cranberry vodka. I used to drink in oh, college. Oh, vodka crayon. You on your period or well, something? Well, I, I was a promoter. So like no way. A club I mean, the way you promote your comedy shows, I'm like, yeah, I'd go to that club. I love yeah. that. People say, people say that about me being a promoter in the past. So, oh, that makes so much sense. But I would, totally. just, I would just be around the vodka, the cranberry. It's the easiest thing to mix. So. Mm-hmm. Just be drinking it like water. A few, mm-hmm. a f- number That's a good of drink, though. You got good taste. Yeah, but I think that was the that was the start of me not being so comfortable with just consuming alcohol because of how bad that hangover was. Like oh, cranberry okay. vodka, I don't think that there's a worse hangover than that. Maybe a Long Island iced tea. Oh yeah. But cranberry vodka is pretty mm-hmm. much up there. My mom likes that drink. Yeah, she drinks the cranberry yeah. vodka like just hanging out at the house. Not at the house. We don't drink at the house. Oh, okay. Um, but. No, if like we were going out somewhere cute, yeah. you know, she might go great. Coconut Kamikaze, she loves that one What's too. That? That's like, uh, oh, I'm going to butcher this, but it's like coconut vodka, which she likes a lot. Okay. And then something else with it. I don't know. I like te- tequila sunrise. Yeah. I like that one. But you don't drink that really anymore? No, I don't really. I mean, I would do orange juice and grenadine. That's a party. Yeah. You know, was there a, a little mo- seltzer. Was there a period of your life where you were drinking a lot or not really? Oh, my God. Did my mom ask you to? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. my God. She actually texted me before this. Yeah, the, really? The I knew you guys were talking. She's like, just dig into Bonnie's past. Yeah, I need yeah, to know yeah. about I need to know Have about you? the parties in high school. <laughs> Have you met my mom? Yes. Really? When was that? No, I haven't. Not yet. Oh, okay. Because she's like, well, she performs and she's been around to a couple shows okay. and stuff. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. How's that been? Did you, do you like work with your mom on the same show? Yeah, I booked her on shows. Really? I love it. That's amazing. She was on a, that's my cue. Yeah, that you were on. No way, the same Not the one? the same one. But yeah, she okay. was on an earlier one. Love you it. Know? Mm-hmm. That's great. Mom and, m- mom and daughter working together. I used to work at my dad's company. And that relationship was it was well, yeah, yeah. He owns His DJ company? Fridays. No, he, he uh, he's Friday. Works at a he works a, at a real estate company. Our working relationship was good, mm-hmm. you know, until like it, you couldn't really divide the being a dad and being a boss, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes that line gets interluded. Yeah, well, my mom and I are just like so silly and stuff. Like Love during, that. I mean, a little before the pandemic and during the pandemic, we had a two person show that we were doing because mm-hmm. we she's the one who was interested in acting, comedy, musical theater. And then I like that too. Yeah. So we combined that, had like an hour long show. And then we would do a lot of Zoom shows and festivals and stuff. And I love that. I guess I'm a solo act now. No, but I'll still, of course, perform with her. I've had uh-huh. her on. Sh- I'm also pushing her to do, you know, like more stand up and stuff because that's normally what I'm like doing and producing now. And she's great. I mean, she does all the celebrity impressions and stuff. It's awesome, yeah, because, I mean, I love comedy so much, but, you know, you've been to mics and shows where it's same people talk about the same things, and then you have someone being Catherine Heffer, and it's like, oh, that's sick. That's so cool. <laughs> what did your dad do? He's a podiatrist. Okay, is that a foot doctor? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So your mom, nice socks, you, very nice. Yeah, thank you, Dickies. So you and your mother <laughs> would come into the city and come to comedy shows together, like a, a daughter-mother bonding experience like yeah, that? Yeah, definitely. We would do shows together, we would see shows together, and just, like, hang out and stuff, What was the classes. What was the moment that you knew you wanted to come into the city, like, after college? Or was it always like that? Oh, I kind of just graduated and kind of stayed in the same vicinity because I graduated early from NYU and then I went right to grad school at Baruch and then like I was working around there and stuff and so I kind of just stayed in that area. Did you stay with the same roommates like your first apartment out of college? Oh no, I um, I did have a roommate when I lived in Chelsea. Okay. Mm-hmm, back at NYU. I was on my own for a while uh, and yeah just now being in Jersey and stuff just trying to, I don't know, hopefully get back to like, you know, living the Ted Jones life. Mm-hmm. Nice studio <laughs> apartment. Yeah. Some improv instructions on yeah. the fridge. Did you ever take improv? Yes. That was like the first thing I did. How did you feel when UCB closed 2020? Oh, when UCB closed? Yeah, of course. That was very, I mean, 
so many comedy theaters and just like venues in general were so negatively affected. It really breaks my heart, you know, because I just want the best or whatever Miss America answer. I don't know. You yeah, know, like, <laughs> you just want world peace. Yeah, totally. No, I just want everyone to be happy. It's comedy, and it's so crazy that there's so much stress that goes into a place that's supposed to be so happy. Yeah. But it's, it seems like a lot of, uh, or all the, for the most part, I'd say all the comics have bounced back since 2020 happened. You know, people were a lot doing of them that. moved in quick comedy, so. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the, pe- <laughs> the people who were strong and wanted to stay in and like do the park shows, it, yeah. and now they're, you know, um, staying around and stuff. Have, have you seen comedy leap forward since uh, the pandemic has come back? What I think is really Positively. interesting is that COVID kind of equaled the field in a lot of ways i don't know that i feel because sort of pre-covid uh that's when i was first producing that's my cue which is this monthly stand-up show i do that features my favorite comedians yes and um i had it at this place in little italy and it was the first show i was running and producing and i just really you know was so terrified it was my first time doing anything alone no co-producer and then the pandemic hit, and I just learned so much about running shows, what goes into it, communication and stuff. So when COVID kind of ended and people started going back to New York, I really felt kind of in the game for me. It was, I don't know, I, I kind of took that time to really learn and just, I knew I'd get back out there again and just start, like to me it kind of went up. Cause when I started doing shows again outdoors, I did a rooftop show. That was probably the literal pinnacle for me and the last time I would ever do a rooftop because we were like somebody 50 story. No, I was worried about that or that I pushed someone if they had a better <laughs> set. Um, but that was really frightening. The outdoor stuff, you know, that was kind of the worst of it to me. Wait, did you say you were 50 stories up? It was so, so tall. Like I was able to see Empire State Building plus you, is this in Jersey Center. City. No, this was in uh, like Lower East Side. It was just way, yeah, I, I don't have a fear of heights, but yeah. I have a fear oh, of do. great sunsets. It yeah. was terrible. <laughs> oh my was, gosh. I think now so, over the last few years, you're really starting to see comics branch out and do many different things. Also, only you're fans. doing the sketch, sketches, only fans, yeah. I don't. I think some comics have had some success putting their comedy on OnlyFans. If there's like a sure. an inappropriate joke that they'll throw up there. <laughs> I don't know if there's shorts on OnlyFans now. I'm not very well versed in the OnlyFans mm-hmm. subscriptions at the moment. Mm-hmm. But not saying I wouldn't be. But I'm like, uh, I, I think that there's just so many different platforms, and you kind of got to do your best to figure out which one uh, which one works the best for you. You know what I mean? That's another big thing. Like you make a lot of content. You produce a lot of your own sketches, and I really think that's the way to go. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, cause I do a lot of live performance and of course I film myself, but I'm not really, or I don't have the time to take that footage and edit it for myself and put myself out there and create more of a public platform. Like you really, you already have your Ted Jones comedy show and all your branding and stuff. It's like your own little SNL. Yeah, I mm-hmm. appreciate that. How do you feel about live comedy shows? For stand-up? Yeah, like if you were to stream the Bonnie Q show. Yeah, streaming is another thing that I'm kind of like, yeah, that's a lot of pressure, definitely. Um, I just think because it's video, possibly, and then someone could take it and make their own video and their own content from it, Mm -hmm. or take screenshots. I mean, that's what I've done to people. Right. (laughs) Well, other creators, I've I've heard Mr. You familiar with Mr. Beast? Yes. I've heard him talk about how other creators would say, like, Oh, this guy keeps stealing all my content, posting on TikTok, and oh. he's getting more likes than me. But Mr. Beast would say, well, I mean, he's advertising for free for you. So I think that's how some creators are slowly starting to realize that if people are out there posting your stuff for free, they're getting more eyeballs on you, which could lead to more ticket sales in the future. So I think Are they that, giving you credit? Did they give him credit or I mean, steal you, the joke? Because that's something that we yeah, probably both know. Right. But I think that like if there's a, a TikTok account that's like funny stand up clips and like that's oh, the yeah, name that's of the great. account and that's then they just promo. put Right. If they're putting your name and stuff, so if wh- they're stealing your joke, that's like. Oh, you mean if some another comic is doing yes. your joke? That's brutal. I, I mean, don't know if I've I seen would that so pay for someone to do one of my jokes. I'm like, you really want to go up there and say that in front of all these people? Go, go off this. Like, uh, <laughs> no, but I hear you with the credit. Because that's, I mean, that's been an issue in the past before that there was videos and, you know, people st- joke stealing and stuff like that. 
Yeah, I mean, with that also, uh, or just especially if like you see like a tweet was stolen or whatever. I oh, mean, oh man, that's just that like, happened to you. No, but I'm just saying that's like weird category stealing a tweet. Yeah, it is very deliberate. Well, what's great is he can't really tell tone from like words, but I mean, if it's the same premise, you also gotta like throw it up to be like, is it hack, you know, as hell? Cause for me, if I ever thought a tweet was stolen, I'll look back at the tweet and I'll be like, yeah, this is very broad. You know, this is very like bottom of the, I don't really need this. I Someone said something like, you know, you should be creating content so much that like one tweet doesn't really mean anything. And that's kind of what it is with like videos too. It's kind of, you know, shooting your shot in the dark, whatever. You never yeah. know what's gonna hit as viral. I think something's hilarious, but no one else does. Yeah, it's weird. Like we're relying so Always much happens. on computers. No, <laughs> but we're relying so much on computers though to deem what's funny. Yes, grandma. You know what the I mean? The computers. You know what I mean? These computers. <laughs> and I've never ordered an Uber Eats again. The restaurant was awful. But I think, yeah, it's, uh, it, we are relying a lot on computers, you know, to push certain material push ticket sales, so I don't know. I feel oh yeah, like that's kind of the only way people communicate with each other. Yeah. I mean, I would hate to have a conversation. That's yeah. just terrible. You on the dating apps, speaking of having a conversation? No. no. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way to talk to women these days, you know, through the dating You apps. have a podcast. That's, yeah, you I could talk comedy. to them through the podcast. You're yeah. a nice Jewish boy. What are you talking I, about? I literally have to put this audio clip like on my dating Ted profile. Jones, <laughs> he's a catch, entrepreneur. <laughs> Keep going, keep going. He's got um, a one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> Imagine Can I'm I like, say the area? Yeah, don't say that, Jess. No, we okay. have to cut that out. Literally, Instagram is the biggest dating app. It is. For me, for, like, I do not have dating apps. Yeah. But I've been hit on, like, you know, constantly on in Instagram and Love stuff like that. that. From guys who come to the show or what? Sure. Stalkers, yeah. whatever. You know, it's like, it's funny. That's or, great. you know, you get a guy who wants to, everybody wants to pay you uh, yeah. <laughs> all this money. Send me some socks. Yeah, really. No problem. I'm warming <laughs> these up right now, baby. It's my dad, the podiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh my also, yeah, can I be honest? Like, yeah. I actually really do believe I can never have dating apps in New York because so many male comics are on them. Yeah, I've seen a few female cannot, comics on it. You know, yeah, I but I've seen see? so many. Spill uh, or tell I, me, I have to bleep, bleep, this bleep out. it out. Yeah, please. Um, Wait, just get my reaction. Yeah, um, freaking. Who did you? Do you know her? Um, don't include that either. No, 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 no I'm not. I have, just, I have to bleep them all out. Uh, Ooh. And they liked me too, and I was like, "What? You guys yeah. like me? That's like, but like, I, what, I'm not gonna like them back. That's like, I don't know." You I don't find like that weird. Back. Oh, you I just saw them. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. You so just on saw this them, yeah. on this particular dating app, you can see the people who liked you, and then they'll yeah. they'll like come up to you and say this person liked you. Yeah. So I'm like, I, that would just, that would be weird. That's cool. Or like sometimes I'll see like I've seen. Yeah. Her and I'm like not gonna like her just because I see her so much, even though like maybe I would click the heart if I didn't know she was a comic. But since she's a comic, I'm like, come on, I can't. can't really? Click the heart. That's, That's the so stuff. What other are no goes? Well, I think just the comedy aspect is because, like, I would see you so much. And, like, I'd rather just have a girl, like, as a podcast guest than as, mm -hmm. like, a potential one-time hookup. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking business. I love how you have I'm to. I'm thinking business. -wise. You know, you have yeah. to put women in boxes because well, that's I where think... you put objects, obviously. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the women are dumb, so I do all the thinking beforehand. You know, she can't be funny I'm actually and go on stage. And Italian. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have the wig over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to make you mustache. more Jewish than you look. Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think that ultimately, it's like you gotta, you gotta kind of keep the the Facade. business and personal separate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I use a stage I, name. Like at your job, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to date somebody at your job, maybe, unless you thought you were going to marry them. Because otherwise it would just be ox. Is marriage the ultimate goal? I mean, isn't that the only, I don't know. Good question. Good question. What do I we don't think? Because it's like, we're both Jewish. So we obviously have that like, well, I don't really have any guilt for my parents. Thank mm. God. But to marry have, a Jewish guy. Oh no, that's something I personally would want. But yeah. I mean, even just marriage in general. Like right. I've never had the press of like, well, I'm 26. Okay. I don't know, do you have that So pressure? you're young. No, well, I think like- just, Okay, then why are you worried? I'm not worried. Okay. I'm not. But I think just because I have started pursuing another career so intensely over the last few mm -hmm. years, my parents are less stressed on me finding a woman because I'm focused on other things. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe in the past, they'd be like, where's your girlfriend, Ted? But my sisters are younger. They don't really have any pressure either. Mm -hmm. My parents are good. Also, my mom converted before I was born. So she doesn't to have like the full Jewish guilt to Judaism.
Okay, so your dad's Jewish. Yes, and my mom is Jewish because I was before oh. I was born, she converted. Okay, my mom never converted. She's Irish Catholic, and my dad's Jewish. So you had a bat mitzvah? Yes. Nice. Celebrity theme. How was that? Oh, <laughs> oh my God, who were you? No, 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 I wasn't. Well, I mean, like, I was the celebrity, but all the tables were different celebrities. What table did you sit at? Robert Downey Jr. I love, love it. it. Wait, yeah. when? But that must have been, like, right after he got out of jail? Or what movie was he in that you were so Trump infatuated with? Oh, my God. <laughs> I think we've actually talked about how good that movie is before. That was like that. That was the last um, movie that I feel like was very questionable, like that, where like people could or he could get away with. A doing lot of things, things were really like well, yeah. Tom Jones, or not Tom Jones, Tom. My uh, uncle. What it Cruise? Tom Cruise. Remember he wore that like oh, big yeah, suit big to be like Les Grossman. He was really, he was really good. That was that. so great. That was a really good movie. Uh, no wait, I think I must have been at the Adam Sandler table. Like that's my ultimate favorite oh, celebrity love ever. Oh, Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. Do you? Have, what was your favorite Adam Sandler movie that maybe would be one off that people wouldn't know? Oh yeah, you love the Zohan. We talked about that. Oh, you don't mess with we the Zohan. About that. Did you like Click? Yeah, I mean it sad. actually did make me very sad. Yeah, I cried during that. Exactly. Movie. Um, I love Uncut Gems. Seen that, you don't have to see. Oh yeah, well, that was a great movie too. That you was did it. A good I saw job. it in the theaters. That's how wow. diehard I was. Yeah, I mean I also like Jack and Jill. I also love that's my boy. Wait, was Jack and Jill with he Jennifer his own twin Anderson? Sister. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as a girl. No, I don't want the mystery date that Jennifer Aniston. I'm like, I don't want a fucking mystery. I want Vanilla Ice and then Andy Samberg, your son. That's that's my boy. Yeah. Just insane. Yeah, you know he's great. The guy's got to get discography or however you say it, movie, movie, filmography. He's done a great job. One of the best Jewish actors, I'd probably say. Oh, so amazing! And he's playing basketball with Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, I now. saw that the other weekend. It's That's great. great. Do you play sports in high school? No. You were just theater. I was um, pretty developed, you know, so running wasn't what do my you mean? strong suit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the teachers wouldn't take pictures with me. That's what. <laughs> I brought my own milk to That's school. That's what I'm talking oh about, Ted. Two <laughs> percent. Uh, That's a good one. Yeah, That's so like I was one. never into running, and so you know it's terrible. Uh, but really? Well, it's just it's cumbersome and stuff to run. I don't. This is very niche. I don't know. No, let's other, talk about it. Um, if you're cool with it. Sure, it's. I'm just not that athletically built, and I don't really like sports too much. I know you're a sporty guy. Tennis is cool. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I actually went to tennis camp. You did? Mm -hmm. Where? One summer. Like Lawrenceville? Uh, Teaneck, New Jersey, I think. Okay. <clears throat> a lot of Jews there. Hell yeah. It's cute. Um, but... And a lot of good tennis players actually from Teaneck too. I know sure, a few I don't know. from Teaneck High School. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you enjoy yourself when you went to tennis camp though? No, I don't really like sports. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Like also, sports. tennis is tough too. If like you're yeah. just learning it in the hot sun, you're eight years old. Like, get me out fully of here. I want some Kool-Aid. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you fully developed. You're eight years old. I need some Kool-Aid. Yeah, They're like, yeah. you have milk. You're like, what? Um, Ted's thinking of but, it. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes, sometimes sport camps, especially, what was it, Sleepaway? No, I never liked that stuff. Did you ever go to Sleepaway camp? I think I did, and I was miserable. Me like, too. I was so young. Oh, that's really sweet. I got homesick. You're such a Jewish boy. Yeah, sweet man, Jewish yes. boy. Yeah. Three and a half weeks, way too long for me. Yeah. Ter well, I'm not even in my own bed. That's what I hate. Yeah. You know, because I'm kind of like, ooh, it's like, I mean, in college, one roommate was terrible enough, but then to choose to have or other, you know, I'd also don't like camp in general, hot sun. I was a very indoorsy Jersey Mall girl. And I like comedy. Thank God, you know, comedy clubs are indoors again yeah. and air conditioned. Did you ever go to Atlantic City Comedy yes, Club down there? Yes, I've performed there. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. I can't remember the last time I went to Atlantic City. How does it look? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's inside uh, the Claridge Hotel. Well, I meant Atlantic City itself. Oh, not it's the a comedy dump. club. It's a, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very frightening. Uh, well, the thing is, what's so funny is I'm from like North Jersey, so I have jokes making fun of South Jersey. Sorry, before you start that, where does North Jersey start? Because people say North South. And I don't really care now. about anyone else. I'm right. just. Right. Well, let's say about you. I mean, there's. Oh, God. <laughs> I would say like New Brunswick is like the middle, I guess. So anything above, I don't even know what I'm talking about. You know, Oops. like if you showed me a picture, I would just cut it in half. Whoever says Taylor Ham, North Jersey, Pork Roll, South Jersey. Oh, okay. That's like our that, thing. That's the thing. Yeah. What did you guys, what did kids in the suburbs do in malls that they spend all their time there? Can I say that? Over yeah, there? please. <laughs> well, you were, you were talking about how you were just what like I a do mall, mall girl. What I do in mall dressing What? Yeah. <laughs> you mall girl. I love the mall so much. Such a Jersey thing to say. Um, 
Just a bunch of cute stores there. I mean, it kind of was my second home. My home away from home. Just um, like your mom would drop you off on a Saturday. You meet no, your I'd friends there. No, I'd be with there. my mom. We'd hang out. We'd have a what girl mall do? day. Just go around to stores, you know, steal shit. No, I'm kidding. We'll go to Claire's, stuff. get your ears pierced. Kind of. Get our nipples pierced together. Yes. They nice. won't do that. My mom made me ask <laughs> as a joke. That's where our real friend relationship came from. It's like my mom daring me, say this I to this love guy. That. She makes And then when like, you said it, though. she was like, Bunny. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, she'd call me an asshole and, like, leave the store and, like, pretend she never even knew me. And that's so what was the thing. reaction? It didn't happen, Oh, just, right? it's usually, you know, a coked out teen who's like, okay, you know, they didn't do it. But my mom would see the embarrassment in my face and, you know, that'd be everything. She ever play some pranks on you at home? Sure, totally. Like April, April Fool's pranks? Her favorite thing... To do, uh, I like told debating saying it. Well, no, 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 because it's just, <laughs> it's really gonna take you inside my childhood. Uh, she's a shiksa, so non-Jew, Irish Catholic. So we would celebrate Christmas, and she had this tradition of uh, Christmas Eve. My sister and I would usually have a sleepover in my room, and we'd like close the door and have our little privacy, our little snacks and movies and stuff. And then my mom or Santa would come into the house and take the jingle bells and say like ho 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 who was santa though i don't want to say my mom okay we found out later but my mom as santa would say like ho 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 like santa's here and i'm gonna kill you and she would throw herself at my bedroom door and you could hear my mom like break and laugh and stuff like that. And she's like, I'm going to kill you. That's she hilarious. Just, she and just then your dad came in as like Hanukkah Harry saving the day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was working, oh, you okay. know, so he can buy the jingle bells that my yes, mom would use. Yes, of to. course. Oh, but that was great. Like she, what I loved about that so much is she did it for herself. You That's know, my best. sister would just roll her eyes and be on her phone. I would be like, don't break my door. And my mom was having a ball. And she was just laughing to herself. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, buddy. I can't tell you how many times I'm literally in here by myself just laughing at funny shit that I had thought or said out loud. Like, I was on Photoshop the other day. I was, I had five minutes. So I made this ridiculous background. I, I think, well, my friend's a doctor. So, like, I popped up. Mm. I'll pop up the, the thumbnail right here that I made. But my friend's a penis doctor. So I was like, I made a big photo of him, blew it up, and then wrote a title. I was like, how to spot a penis. And then it's like him holding a picture <laughs> of a penis. And like, I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And people who I send it to are like, dude, how much time did that take? I'm like, I'm good at Photoshop. It took yeah, like yeah, five yeah. minutes. <laughs> and I was laughing for an hour and a half. No That's joke amazing. to myself. You sent it to the penis doctor? I sent it to the penis doctor. I don't know if he liked it so much. Like, oh. Yeah, but I, he thought it was, I'm sure he thought it was funny. But like, yeah. he was like, what are you Maybe doing? Maybe he won't hang it up in his so office. Like, yeah, he might not. But yeah, exactly. And like I sent it to his sister. I was like, can you believe the article that I wrote? And she was like, what article? Just like send it. You're seeing it right here. But uh, can you believe the time yeah, I have on my hands? <laughs> yeah. I'm but, so good at Photoshop. You know what I mean? If something takes me five minutes and it's going to give me the biggest laugh of my life, I might not need a girlfriend. That might, <laughs> be, that might just be for me. Perfect. But you found yeah. yourself. That's what yeah. I don't know if I'm necessarily looking for a girlfriend so much right now, but if it happens, you know, it happens. What do you think your long-term goal is for being an entertainer as you are right now, mm. wearing a few hats? Yes, um, I want to keep all the hats. No, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I really like where I'm at now, and I kind of just want to see where it can go. I know that sounds very vague, but I'm kind of doing everything I love. I'm well, nice. working in entertainment, in comedy. I'm actively meeting new people and making connections and also like comedians are my favorite kind of people not all comedians are good people but i really do enjoy meeting and really vibing with comics i just feel like it's just we we get each other kind of like where oh yes i don't want to go to karaoke i'd much rather or trivia i want to go on stage and like tell a joke like that's a very odd thing to want to do totally. so I really do like people who have that as a goal. And I love people who are super motivated. Just being around good creative energy, that's kind of what I think will put me in the best place. I guess to kind of wrap up here, what was the, what was the one thing that you learned from going to a theater program at NYU that you might not have otherwise learned being in the comedy scene for these years? Breathing Last is so years. important. Oh my God. <laughs> in through the nose, out through the mouth. Yes. It, what's so interesting now is that I take yoga for fun. 
And back then it was a mandatory class that I got a C in. So I remember those acting yoga classes. So it's just like, maybe it's because it was part of a program and I feel like I had to do well rather than really express myself. It's like, I'm having more fun artistically now than when I was studying and being graded for it. Um, so forget where your question was, but well, I was just saying, what was one thing that you learned in? Oh yeah. Then I made school. fun of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, God, I don't remember. I was drinking so much. Well, so, no, I'm something that was different from maybe what you've learned over the last. What four I or five actually years. really like that I'll never forget an acting teacher said, which is go out and see as much as you can. And even if it's terrible and you hate it, that, opi- that opinion is still like very important and informative. You know, because then you'll be like, okay, well, I will never do that. Right. And I see that all the time when I'm on stage. I'm like, I will never talk about that topic. You know, you see that kind of stuff. So it is really important not to just seek out what you love, but to also find out what you hate. Because it really does inform you. Take gems from each little piece of information that you could get. Yeah. And even the gravel. Even the gravel. Bonnie, thank you so much for coming on the Ted Jones World Podcast. Guys, this is an amazing episode. Bonnie, before we get out of here, we're popping up your Instagram. So please let us know your Instagram and uh, where we can find you over the next few weeks. Surely. Thank you so much for having me, Mr. Ted Jones. My Instagram handle is Bonnie Q Comedy. Please follow me. I have some fun shows coming up. Uh, That's My Q, which is a show that Ted has previously been on. The next one is... Great show. August 4th. I don't know when the episode is coming up, but basically it's a monthly show. Yes. Uh, Just follow me for more updates on more shows. Absolutely. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in, listening in. Peace.